Welcome to Word for Word New Zealand. I'm your host, David Hogan. And to, in this study, we have a spiritual oasis of texts, topics, and understanding the various aspects of the, the, div, the divine science of prayer. Let us put our spiritual spectacles on as I have a reading for you from my favorite author. First, Hebrews 2.9. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everybody. And he did in these perilous times when a form of godliness is popular in the world and a profession of Christianity is fashionable, only a few will discern the living way of self-denial and cross-bearing. Watch and pray is the instruction of him who endured temptation in our behalf Christ knows our danger, for he has contended with our powerful foe. He knows that our enemy is on the track of all who are striving to do right. With his specious arts and devices, Satan sneaks, seeks to ensnare the servants of God and turn them from Christ in the broad, into the broad path that leads to destruction. He watches our going out, he watches our coming in, and although unseen, he works earnestly and diligently seeking to destroy those who are ignorant of his designs and schemes. Through the influence of the evil one, even the religion of Christ has been perverted to the minds of many who profess to know and obey the truth. But no matter how high is your profession, you will not stand the test unless you are doers of the word of God. Those only who have a living, abiding principle in the heart, who will not turn aside to do anything that has the appearance of evil, who will not venture to tarnish the soul with impurity, and who are washing their robes, and making them white in the blood of the Lamb. The washing of the robes of character must go on from day to day, that at last me may be found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but blameless before him who we have much to do. This work of purifying ourselves, even as he is pure, must be taken up individually. We should examine our motives, our actions, in the light of God's holy law. We should always be saying each morning, is this the way, Lord? Every earnest, sincere seeker who prays will be answered of the Lord. The petitions of honest inquirers are always heard by the author of our salvation. He has promised. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Angels of God are watching to see the development of our characters. They are weighing moral worth, and may the great day of God reveal the fact that we have not been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Signs of the Times, May the 25th, 1891. Therefore, the science of prayer. It is important for every Christian who wants to know about prayer to first understand where is Jesus now and be able to know by reading it in the Bible. And your verses for that are found, those writing it down, write this down, 
Hebrews chapter 9, verses 8, 9, 11, and 12. But Christ came being a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Notice, not made with hands. Carrying on to verse 9. He entered into the holy place. So become familiar, first of all, and know from the Bible where Jesus is now. Yes, you say to anybody, where's Jesus? Oh, he's in heaven. Not quite good enough. Where is he in heaven and what's he doing? Hebrews 8, 4. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 4. While he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Now, we've shared this before, the three ministries of Jesus. While on earth, a prophet. While in the sanctuary in heaven, not made with hands, a priest. And when he comes back to the earth to get the redeemed, a king. Prophet. First, priest, second, king, third. We are living in the time, in the year 2023, of the heavenly priesthood ministry of Jesus Christ our Lord, who on October the 22nd, 1844, entered into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, and there he stands as our minister, as our intercessor, waiting for our prayers. Luke 21, 31. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. Now that text, Luke 21, 31, those things are the things you and I have been watching for the last three to four years in the world. Things that have never happened in the world, ever. So when you see these things to come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, Matthew chapter 24, you well know, go through it in your own time. There are all the signs of Jesus coming. Matthew 24. The Lord spoke a lot about the signs of the times. Verse 34 of Luke 21. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be charged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36. Notice here, please. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Aren't they beautiful texts? Do you want to stand before the Son of Man? Or do you want to say, hide me in those rocks, fall on me rocks? Or do you want to stand there and say, this is our Lord, we have waited for him. Praise the Lord. We all want to say, this is our Lord, we've waited for him. Therefore, verse 36 said, watch therefore and pray always. Now, what are the dangers here of surfeiting and drunkenness. Do we just read over that and say, well, I don't drink alcohol and um, I'm, I'm not surfeiting. Well, let's just have a little deeper look, shall we? I went into the Greek. Surfeiting, it is the opposite of temperance. You know what temperance is. Moderation in all things, moderation in good things. So watch that you're not caught in intemperance in these last days. Drunkenness, 
Well, I went into the Greek word there. Boasting, being proud of yourself, the opposite to modesty, having Dutch courage, presumption. So really, in a deeper sense, watch therefore and pray that you don't be caught in intemperance, presumption, immodesty, and boasting in the last days. You can come, you can come before the Lord drunk without using alcoholic or drugs. Now, you know, Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus 10 too, they came to minister in the sanctuary and they had been drinking some alcohol. It doesn't say a lot. I had a good look at this. And they didn't drink a lot. They weren't rolling drunk and staggered in there, but they'd had some. And they were struck down dead. We are entering into the sanctuary with our prayers. Can you see? We are entering into the sanctuary just like Nadab and Abba who did literally back then. We enter into the sanctuary to our Lord Jesus with our prayers. Therefore, no, no surfeiting. No drunkenness in all its forms. Luke 11, 9. And I say to you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10. For everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks finds. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Is prayer some sort of magic exercise? Just reading that text, the Lord said, I can ask and it'll be given. And bang, that's it. I've heard people say, I've been asking and praying and nothing happened. There is such a thing written in regards to the people of Laodicea. Those who are indifferent at this time of Christ's coming, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, that's Revelation 3.16. Listen to the commentary on that, please, from Six Testimonies, page 408, paragraph 2. I just had to put this in here. I had to. Six Testimonies, page 408, paragraph 2. The figure of spewing out of the mouth means that he cannot offer up your prayers or expressions of the love of God. He cannot endorse your teaching of his word or your spiritual work in any way. He cannot present your religious exercises with the request that grace be given to you. Wow. Let's look at that again. Because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spray you out of the mouth. Revelation 3.16 applies to your prayers going to heaven and not being presented to the Father by Jesus. That would be a problem that we would like to know if that's happening. It's a situation that can take place and many people, perhaps they don't know that their prayers are going now higher than the ceilings. James 4.3 gives us some clue on this. James, the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3. You ask and receive not. Okay, this is what we're talking about. You ask and receive not. Your, your, your prayers are spewed out. Okay, the Bible does say that. Because you ask amiss. That you may consume it on your lust. Verse 4, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, this text, for those of you taking texts and those of you writing them down on the recording afterwards, and if you are watching a recording on Word for Word New Zealand, I found out that if you're watching it, if you look along the bottom, you'll find three little dots at the end. If you press on those three little dots, it'll put the transcript and the text down the sides for you as you're going along. 
So that's when you're watching on my channel, Word for Word New Zealand on YouTube, discover those three little dots, three little dots, click on them, and it'll give you options, and it'll say transcript, I think the word is. Click on that, and down there will come the words for you for those of you writing text down. And I would suggest that we take a good look at this James chapter 4, because are we committing adultery? Are we adulteresses? Well, just hang on a minute. Adultery is what? I looked in the Greek again. Simply, the word there said in the Greek, unfaithfulness. So there it is. You ask amiss and you receive not because you're unfaithful. And James gives the hint, you're flirting with the world too much. So that is one reason in the divine science of prayer explained quite clearly by James, the point number one to understand in this two-part study is, have I completely separated from the world? Am I doing a Lot's wife? Am I taking a glance back every now and then? Am I doing a Lot's wife? Have I not quite completely come out? Is my body out, but my head turned? My thoughts, you see, when when Lot's wife turned to head, the illustration for us today is your brain going back to some things you perhaps enjoyed for a short time in the world. If you are, then maybe your prayers are just stopping with Jesus in the most holy place and not being presented to the Father. So therefore we must have, brothers and sisters, effectual prayer. Christ's lessons in regard to prayer should be carefully considered because there is a divine science in prayer. He shows what is the true spirit of prayer. He teaches the necessity of, and here's the next word to come in. We've dealt with friendship with the world. The next word is perseverance. Write it down. Perseverance in presenting our request to God and assures us of his willingness to hear and answer prayer. So, not adulterers, faithful, and learning the true spirit of prayer. Every defilement must be cleansed and taken out of the way as excellence is developed in our life. And then we have a right to persevere in our prayers. We must understand that there is a reason God asks us to persevere in certain things in prayer. Now your quote to the Lord, and this is John 16, 24. It comes under ask. So just write down ask, John 16, 24, quoting hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. You haven't asked anything in my name. Now, back then, when Jesus is saying that, they hadn't asked. They'd only prayed to Yahweh, Jehovah. And so it was a new thing to pray in the name of Jesus. Is there a lesson for us today? Yes, there is a deeper lesson. If we're taking on the name of Jesus, we're taking on his instruction to us. Love not the world. Believe. So the second one word to write is believe. Our, our subject, the divine science of prayer. Uh, Mark 11, 24, therefore I say to you, what things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So clear conscience, separated from the world, not doing a lot's wife, persevering, now start believing. And the most, the most important prayers for you and I and everybody to ask and believe, believe in is the prayer for forgiveness of sin. And of course, in our quiz tonight, 1 John 1 9 is your promise. Write down 1 John 1 9. 
You've got to read that off to the Lord. If you haven't, just, Lord, you've promised in 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sin, you're faithful and just to forgive my sin. Don't leave out the last bit and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Read 1 John 1, 9 to the Lord. That is a very important part of the divine science of prayer. The Lord loves to hear him praise us. He doesn't mind if we praise him all day. The more we praise him, the better. He doesn't mind repeated praise and he doesn't mind us repeating scripture to it. He loves it because it's his own word. We're not to be overwhelmed with the thought that our errors and sins will not be forgiven. It causes weakness and discouragement. And Satan loves to cast a dark shadow upon us that we may think perhaps our sins aren't forgiven. Some people have said it's useless for me to pray. I don't think God will forgive my sins. I've had that said to me, and Heather's had that said to her again recently at doors. And there's no good me being a Christian. God won't forgive what I've done. I heard it many times in my seven years of door knocking, five days a week, full time. Yes, I know I'm not interested in God. He couldn't forgive me for what I've done. Are you Are you ready? To just go, but but sir, it says in the Bible, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's true, sir. You see, you've got to say that to people, which is why 1 John 1 9 is very important. When these people say it's useless for me to pray, you are God's agent to share the great joy of salvation and forgiveness of sin. You you know. A guilty conscience eats away at people physically. I'm sure you know that. Father, forgive my sins in the name of Jesus. I know I've been terrible. Satan does not want you to offer up prayers for forgiveness of sin. Hebrews 5, 7, he offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears. Who did? Jesus did. There you go. Write down, please. Hebrews 5, 7. He offered up his prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. So we had asked, we had believed, persevere. Now, strong crying and tears. Now, that's between you and the Lord. The Holy Spirit will bring you into that position. Strong crying and tears. You cannot fabricate your own. But the time will come for all of us if we're alive when this dreaded thing happens. One world, you know what it is. You know what it is. And no one can buy, sell or exchange except they have the mark of the beast. You know what it is. You know it's coming. And we will all be offering up prayers with strong crying and tears. So write down Hebrews 5, 7, strong crying and tears. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. You're in your closet. You're talking to the creator of the whole universe. He loves you. He sent his son to get you. Of course he'll honor and listen and to your sharp, strong crying and tears. So we ask in his name. We pray in the name of Jesus because he's our mediator. He's our go-between. He's our atoning sacrifice. Our mind must be in tune with these science aspects of prayer so that we are not spewed out. John 5, 14. Afterwards, Jesus finds him in the temple and says, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Verse 15, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which has made him whole. So the next thing about science of prayer is, we don't go about bragging, of course, that the Lord's forgiven our sins. But the Lord is glorified when we say certain prayers were asked for healing, supplying of wants and needs, and most of all, the supply through the Holy Spirit of character deficiencies. 
it makes an impact on people when you say with strong crying and teeth, with perseverance. I asked the Lord that he would help me to subdue my temper, and it did. I don't have a temper now. Some people would love to hear that. Like Jesus said to this man, you've been healed. Go and go and tell people. That's part of the science of praying too. So we pray for forgiveness of sins and we arise cleansed with the thought of sin no more in our mind. Psalm 68, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Aha, uh -huh. let's look at this then, shall we? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The word regard, I went to the Greek here, the Koine Greek, actually it says, if I favor sin in my heart over obedience, the Lord will not hear me. So regard, if I favor sin in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. So we have perseverance. Luke 18, 7. And shall God not avenge his own elect, which cry day and night to him, though he be along with them? 8, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? What does it mean? And shall not God avenge his own elect? Well, the word there is, Act on their behalf. Now, the situation here is you're being persecuted in a time of trouble. You're being persecuted in your family. You're being persecuted in the church. You're being persecuted in the neighborhood. Wherever you're being persecuted. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Are you God's elect? Then leave it to him to act on behalf for you. And leave it to him. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Romans 12, 14, vengeance is mine. So God will avenge them. You, you must be along with them because the time will come and avenge them speedily. They won't have time to think. It'll be it. However, he says there, will he find faith on the earth? Yes, you will need the faith of Jesus to get through that. So we ask, we believe, we pray, we keep our minds pure, we persevere. Prayer is not a work to change God. It is to bring us in harmony with God. Because communion with God imparts knowledge of his will the true prayer engages the energies of our soul brothers and sisters and if we pour our wants out before him feel emptiness desire heaven david said all my desire is before thee isn't that wonderful all my desire is before thee and my groaning is not hid from thee my soul thirsts for God. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul unto me. Now write down Psalm 38, 9 and Psalm 42, verses 2 to 4. I just highlighted that. My desire is before thee. This is David's words. And my groaning is not hid from you. My soul thirsts for my God. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul unto thee. So we're going into a deeper stage of prayer and communion, the science of prayer now. And David, once again, how often the Psalms have instruction for us. Because it is the effect that God has on you when you're praying more than the effect that you have on God. 1 John 5, 11. And this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Verse 12. He that has the son has what? Life. And he that has not the son of God does not have life. Can you see the importance of getting this prayer right? Right down to pouring out my soul unto you. 
you you have to speak to Jesus far more intimate than anyone else you spoke to on the earth. That's a relationship we've got to come to. When you go into your closet, shut the door. And when you're in secret, pray to the Lord. And the Lord who sees in secret will answer you openly. Isn't that wonderful? We must appropriate Jesus in our life. We have no righteousness of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. Nothing to boast about. But Christ has made a way of escape for us, brothers and sisters. He lived on earth amid trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived a sinless life. He died for us. And now he offers to take your sins and in exchange he's going to give you his righteousness. So therefore the word appropriate comes into. What does appropriate mean? And well, it means Jesus to become part of you. You have to appropriate Jesus. A-P-P-R-O-P-P-R-I-A-T. You have to appropriate Jesus. The Revelation 18 angel. Matthew 24, 44, first of all. Be you also ready for a such an hour you think not the son of the son of man comes. Me, a Revelation 18 we've been looking at. The loud cry of the fourth angel's message, which is as we've studied, is a revelation of the character of the love of God that's never been given on the planet before. It is not running around saying the seventh day is the Sabbath. The loud cry is teaching people the love of Jesus towards us, how he loves you, how you can pour your heart out to him. And if you love him, then you'll keep his commandments. It'll become naturally through the power of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Nothing in this world is worth contending for but the glory of God. The only rock that will stand is the rock of ages. The only truth that will stand this ref in this refuge of absolute deception and error that's in the world today is the truth of the Bible and Jesus. Mystic Babylon is forming, and it is after the blood of the saints. We must be wide awake through prayer to catch the beams of light shining from the Lord onto our souls. And he will brighten us with the glory of him and we will brighten the earth with the loud cry of Jesus' love. And those who cherish that light, brothers and sisters, will receive more. Increasing light shines on increasing light. The heart must be emptied of every defilement and cleansed from anything from this world. By confession, by forsaking sin, by earnest prayer, by heartfelt soul outpouring to God. There is no other way. We can't escape it. It has to be. God began the work in you. When you first were baptized, the Lord started the work. And don't for one moment think that he won't finish it. He takes you a long way from that watery baptism to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then a new body in heaven. Praise the Lord for that. Are we looking forward to that? Do not be afraid to send up your petitions to God. While the sanctuary is still open, talk to him about anything you have to. You will feel better after you've done so. Examine your feelings. Examine your life. Ask the Lord through the Holy Spirit to dig deep into you. Prize the things of heaven above everything in this world. Keep your willpower strong and straight. From the Signs of the Times, November the 18th, 1903, paragraph 7. A man's knowledge of God's will does not set aside the necessity of offering earnest supplications to him. This is Signs of the Time, November the 18th, 1903, paragraph 7. Of offering earnest supplications to him for what does she say next? For help and of diligently seeking by obeying his law to cooperate with him and answering the prayers offered. Thus his kingdom is established where? In our hearts, it says. I like that. 
And as far as possible, we must help our own prayers by doing what? Simply resisting temptation. Your will is what's going to be taken to heaven. We've discussed this before. Your body is not going there. Not this one. No, not any part of it. You might have very good hands. You might think you've got wonderful shoulders or strong legs or some such thing or a good set of teeth. None of that's going to heaven. But every bit of your character is, every bit of your willpower is, and your prayers. Don't think that the Lord's going to run it or the angels are going to run out of paper and pen and ink to write down all your prayers because everyone's being stored from the day you first started to pray to now. Every prayer has been written down in the heavenly sanctuary. Every prayer. And so, as we come to a close on this part one of the science of prayer, we have a work to do. Our final text repeating. And I say to you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's the wonderful offering of the Lord. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your ministry in the most holy place. Thank you, Lord, for telling us the Revelation 3, 14 to 21, lay it a sin message. It is possible for prayers not to go past the ceiling and not to go past the sanctuary to our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. May we read and study more deeply in the Bible. And as the words of David said, pour out our soul to you. Teach us this through the power of the Holy Spirit as our prayer. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, with thanks. Amen.